The Bears finally know where they are dancing, and if you are one of those who is looking to desperately get past the second round, it's still going to be a fight. This is Locked On Baylor. You are Locked On Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked on Baylor brought to you by LinkedIn. I am your host, Cam Stewart from ESPN Central Texas. And boy, do we have a lot to go over. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. Start your week with all kinds of basketball. Yesterday was Selection Sunday. We know the Bears are a three seed in the men's tournament. We know the ladies are headed out to Blacksburg and Virginia Tech's regional. And not to be lost in all of this, baseball wins their first Big 12 series in almost a whole year as they knock off the ranked Texas Tech Red Raiders. So we're not going to let that go by the wayside without talking about it just because we have a lot of basketball news to go over. But we do have a lot of basketball news to go over. So first things first, getting with the men's selection show, not too surprising to see that Baylor is at the three seed, but a little bit surprising, I suppose, is they are out in the West region. So they're the three seed in the West, which means they go to Memphis and they will face the Colgate Raiders in round one. Now, not to get too ahead of ourselves, but looking at where that matchup puts puts them in the other, other line for the second round is Clemson. Yes, Brad Brownell's Clemson at the six seed versus the 11 seed New Mexico Lobos, who just won the conference tournament um, in a stacked conference, by the way, the Mountain West. So <clears throat> looking at this, this game first, uh, again, just kind of wasn't surprised to see Baylor stay at the three. Um, by the way, the one and two in that region is North Carolina at one, Arizona at two, and... Uh, Alabama at four. So UNC kind of sneaks in there as the one, not that they're not deserving, but I think a lot of people um, thought that Iowa State was going to get that last one, including myself. Uh, I really did think they had done enough. Um, and looking back at it, I still think they had done enough. Like, I mean, Iowa State is a top 10 team the better part of the, the conference year, right? And they're on the two seed line for almost that whole time, really since we start bracketology. And they go into this conference tournament, and all they did was just smack everyone in front of them, including a three seed in Baylor and the number one seed, or number two overall, but a number one seed in Houston and beat them unlike anybody's beat them before. And that's the second time they've beaten them. So that all of that to go from a two seed to a two seed. And not even the top two seed because they're in UConn's con or uh, region, and UConn's the number one overall. So very weird, man. F kind of felt for Iowa State on that one. So um, that that was kind of the big one for me. And so North Carolina slots into that last number one seed. Arizona, who was on that one line most of the year, drops down to the two, and obviously Baylor at the three. But first thing they got to look at is Colgate from up there in Madison County, New York. Uh, Colgate, you're thinking one thing and one thing only, and that is conference championships. Maybe toothpaste. Fourth straight conference championship for uh, the Colgate Raiders. So they are getting used to this, this March Madness thing. This is not one that, that sneaks up on them at all. So uh, good to see that. They're in the Patriot League, by the way. Patriot League winners, fourth straight year. Uh, they do have some common opponents, which... You don't always get in this first round because you're playing random teams like one from upstate New York. Uh, but they did. They do have some common opponents with Baylor. Gardner-Webb being one. Uh, they both won. Baylor won big in that one uh, over the Gardner-Webb running Bulldogs. And Colgate won by seven. Uh, then you got to go down to, by the way, they, they have played a couple of top teams, including Arizona. They played Arizona in the desert, lost by 30. Uh, they played at Illinois. They lost by only 17. Uh, and did beat Vermont, which is another uh, tournament team. Just throw that in there. But back to common opponents, they also played at Cornell the game before Cornell came down to open up the Foster Pavilion, and the Big Red beat the Raiders in that one. That was in Ithaca, so on Cornell's home floor, uh, and then came and lost to Baylor. So common opponents, there are a couple. 
Uh, Baylor obviously has the upper hand, but that's the way it should be when you're looking at a team from the Patriot League versus a team in the Big 12 that's recently won a national championship. Uh, but they won the Patriot in kind of convincing fashion. Um, so definitely nothing to sneeze at there. That means that is a, a veteran-laden team that has been here before. 25-9 and nine on the season. They've won five in a row. They ran away with their regular season championship at 16-2. and two. Uh, So these guys are not afraid. And they have played top-end teams this year. They didn't win, but they're not going to come in and just cower in the first half. They're not going to do it. And that is the something that you have to run into with a lot of these mid-major teams, teams that are used to winning it and ones that are older than you. Because uh, Baylor is a young team comparatively. And so I look at a team in Colgate that's been to the tournament however many years in a row. And then I look at Baylor and I'm like, ah, the point guard hasn't even played a tournament game <laughs> ever. So uh, experience might be, I mean, it is on Colgate's side. I don't think it's going to win them the game, but uh, interesting to note that. But Baylor will face them on Friday. That's at 11.40 a.m. So uh, before we even hit the noon hour on Friday, you will have Baylor versus Colgate. And then the winner faces New Mexico and Clemson or Clemson. And I'm thinking here like, oh boy, wouldn't this be nice to stick it right to Brad Brownell, who was saying that the ACC should have more teams. The big 12 should have less teams. The big 12 scheming everybody, by the way, Brad, it didn't really work in the big 12's favor. OU misses the tournament, which surprised some people. Kansas state missed the tournament. I think they're both better than Virginia who did make the tournament, but I don't know. That must be a manipulating of the net thing. Uh, and also the Iowa State part of it. Iowa State moved down to a two seed or stayed at a two seed. The only feasible reason is because they didn't have a good non-conference schedule. So that's just thrown right back in your face. Like You said they, they schedule teams that are too easy. Well, apparently Iowa State did and it caught up to them. So I don't know what not much of a leg for him to stand on. Anyway, as much as I would love to throw it back in Brad Brownell's face in the second round if Baylor gets there, I'm worried about New Mexico. The Lobos have a heck of a basketball team down there in, in, in the loaded Mountain West Conference, and they won that conference tournament. My guy, Eddie House, his son is like running it out there. He's a bucket. So it, it's... It's the most uncertain one seed, obviously, of any region uh, in, in the West with North Carolina, but it might be the toughest region for a three seed to get to the Sweet 16. And, you know, Baylor as a program should have goals beyond that, yes, but you haven't made it there since winning the national championship. So we need to focus on really one game at a time because it is the tournament. But getting past that first weekend before we're talking about Final Four, and if they do get to a matchup with with Carolina and Armando Baycott, our old buddy uh, from 2022, I don't think that's as bad a matchup this time around for Baylor. In fact, I think it's a much better matchup for this time around for this Baylor team than it was in 2022 when Baylor was the, was the defending champions and a one seed, which I think is interesting to look at. Arizona. I haven't seen a lot of them this year, but when I have, I've been real impressed by their energy, man. I, I like Arizona, but that was a down pack 12 this year. Uh, all kinds of stuff going on in this West region, which starts in Memphis on Friday. I think it's the best one possible from a one seed standpoint, because you are talking about the fourth one seed. Uh, I wouldn't have minded being in Purdue's region because they choke worse than us most times in most sports. So I, I wouldn't have minded that. But all, all told, it's still a tough road to the Sweet 16. But when you look at the top, it, it's a it's a wide open region, I think. The ladies, they'll really have to go on the road. But interesting challenge lying ahead for them. Well, today's episode of Locked on Baylor is brought to you by Nissan. And this week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by them as well. Each week, we are picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. And I'm going to 
I'm going to give Iowa State its credit again. I'm going with them as the Nissan Armada because they were the bull this weekend. They just barreled right through everybody. They played with hunger and heart and a lot of skill in those last two games, especially the last one against Houston. And they made Houston look like mincemeat in that one. And I didn't think we were going to see that at all this season. It's no wonder they are expected to make a deep run in this tournament. That's why they are the Nissan Armada. So you can take the Armada, the Rogue, the Pathfinder, and go find your next big adventure. Go drive out to Memphis like I am trying to do and do it with Nissan. Shop Nissan. USA.com. It's also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV today. Tell you, I mean, this is my way to watch TV, and it is going to be your best friend when it comes to March Madness. It's the destination for sports, live games, highlights, in depth analysis, anything you need to catch you up on your bracket. Amazon Fire TV has it. It offers amazing viewing experiences with their smart TVs, and you can also use the Fire Stick, which I use and I will be bringing with me wherever we go in the tournament. You can just plug it right into your existing TV, and it has access to all your apps and also millions of movies and TV episodes with free and live TV as well. With March Madness, days away now. You're going to want to have a Fire TV. Trust me on that one. They've also recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from all your favorite sports brands and all for free. That includes all of us, me and all my friends here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. It will keep you up to date on everything, not just March Madness, but NBA, MLB Spring Training, NHL, all of that. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. So if you haven't checked out those Fire TV channels, you need to. Okay, you need to. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. So looking ahead to where the ladies are going, the men, the three seed in the West region headed to Memphis. And of course, we know it's such a big difference in women's basketball with actual host sites, teams playing on their home floor. That used to be a a constant for Baylor, not so much the last two years. And this time they will head out to Blacksburg, Virginia, way up in the hills of Western Virginia. And that is, of course, hosted by Virginia Tech. And the Hokies are... Once again, a, a pretty outstanding basketball team. They've they've had that going pretty good the last couple of years there in the ACC. They were the ACC regular season champions, 24-7 and seven overall. They did lose in the conference championship to Notre Dame. Um, and one thing I want to point out, because we obviously don't know that Baylor's playing them yet. That would be a second-round matchup. But one thing that I think is interesting, on a neutral court, they're 3-2. and two. On the road, they've only played 11 games. They're 6-5. and five. At home, they are 15-0. 15-0, perfect at defending their home court. So, And played Iowa really tough early in the season. I remember that one. Uh, but that's a tough team to play at home. Now, let's actually focus on Baylor's first-round matchup because that is going to be against TBA, the winner of a play-in game against two really, really good schools, uh, Vanderbilt and Columbia. Taking them, taking on each other in that playing game. Winner gets to face Baylor. And these are two pretty good teams for a, a playing game. Now, I know we're used to in the men's game, it's it's either, you know, the worst conference champions or or those teams that are just barely hanging on in the bubble, like a Virginia that I mentioned earlier. This doesn't seem that way. Vanderbilt is 22 and 9. Like that get that gets you in 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 the SEC that gets you in the tournament in the men's game easy right and now the SEC is not as great in in the women's game as it is in the men's game but still pretty good especially top heavy when you look at South Carolina LSU and, and even Tennessee starting to turn it around um, and then they will face the they will face off against Columbia obviously out of the Ivy League the champions of the or excuse me the runners up in the Ivy League um so that they get an at large bid they are a good team away from home 8 and 2 they're they're 23 and 6 on the year like i, I i'm i'm not going to lie to you i don't know my Ivy League women's basketball all that well uh but this is this is a good team in fact they 
They lost to Duke early in the season, but only by four points. So that shows you, uh, and, and they lost to Florida by two. So they, they've hung tough with some pretty good teams and, and, and made good work out there in the Ivy League. So winner of that game takes on Baylor. Um, we, we knew that this was going to be a, a, a road test for Baylor, right? They, that they were not going to be hosting after that loss to Iowa state uh, in the, in the conference semifinals. But what's good about this is they're in the, what essentially the West region, the Portland region and the number one seeds USC. Now USC is good. The, the other USC university of Southern Cal. Okay. They're, they're pretty good. They're, they've been one of the stories of women's college basketball this year. They're probably the team of the future. If I had to pick one, but most of you are like, huh, I didn't know USC was a one because you think of South Carolina, you think of even an LSU, which dropped down to a three. You think of Iowa, you think of all the, these, these just impenetrable teams and Baylor avoids all of them. So all in all, look, I don't, I don't, expect this team to go to the final four. It'll be really nice, but as a five seed in this region, they, they've got a shot. And this is also a region with UConn in it as the three seed. I was really hoping they would match up with LSU's three seed. I think that would have been really funny. You would have had to wait till what the sweet 16 to face them, but uh, that would have been, that would have been really interesting. The other ones in it, A&M Corpus is the 16. They're facing USC, Kansas and Michigan in the eight, nine, uh, Virginia Tech is facing Marshall in that first game. Marshall's a weird team, man. They they will press you all night. They put up 99 shots in their conference championship game. I'm sure you guys saw that stat. Uh, Auburn and Arizona winner as the 11 faces off against Syracuse and stores. Uh, UConn hosting Jackson State in that first round. Duke, which is in this region. I talked about them earlier hosting or excuse me, not hosting. They are playing against Richmond. That's the 7-10, Duke the 7. Uh, that's in Columbus because that other site is Ohio State, the number two seed in the region, taking on my Maine Black Bears. Congrats to Maine. Love their hockey uniforms. Anyway, um, looking ahead at Virginia Tech, that is by no means nothing to steeze at. It's not South Carolina. It's not LSU. It, it, it's not Iowa, which it could have been for Baylor. Um, I, that would have dropped two of those would have made it drop down to the eight probably, but LSU's a three, like you could have just as easily been in that seven, 10 matchup and facing a team like LSU or Notre Dame, which is what we were talking about, uh, earlier. So it would have been, it, it, it would have been, I think significantly tougher to face either of those two teams, but Virginia tech, not someone you could just write off. Um, but for Baylor, what they're going to need is they need to get their shooting right. And this is actually something Nikki Collin talked about with myself and Matt Mosley on ESPN Central Texas on Friday was, you know, it's such a long break between the conference tournament for them and the NCAAs versus the men. It's just a couple of days. But she said, that's actually a good thing for us because I think we just got a little tired. You know, we had a lot of open looks in that fourth quarter against Iowa State where we went three for 24 from the field. And, you know, Bella Fauntleroy hits her first three threes of the game. This was the example she used. And then misses her next seven. And they were all similar looks. So she's looking at it as, let's get back in. Let's rest our bodies. And let's just take a thousand shots in this gym. You know, let, let's, let's, uh, Let's make sure we're getting our shot back. We don't have a break like this in the season. Their bye week was way back in January after they lost to Kansas and Iowa State back to back. Um, so they they are actually relishing this opportunity to have a couple days and and put up some shots and and just have that time for themselves. So usually it's it's a bad thing I think to to go that long, but Nikki Collins using it as a good thing. Now, there is another factor to that. They didn't know they were going to be playing a play-in team. So, yes, you've rested forever. But this other team is has played a tournament game the night before or two nights before. So we'll see how that factors in to Baylor's plans. I want to know what you guys think. Drop that down in the comments below, what you think about this region for both the men and and the women. The women having to go on a, on a true road game here out to uh, Blacksburg, Virginia. 
Today's episode of Locked On Bayors also brought to you by LinkedIn Talent Solutions. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals at the right role. Trust me, there's a lot of college basketball teams going through this process right now. They're using LinkedIn Talent Solutions. I can guarantee it. It's not just any other job board, okay? It's got a network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It's going to give you access to those pros you can't find anywhere else. And LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy is intuitive and intuitive. And of course, it's easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours, okay? They know that your business, you're, you're wearing a lot of hats as a small business owner, right? Okay, they, they know that. So it's all about making that process easier, helping you write your own job description, weeding out some of the non sequitur candidates for you. That's why two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So you can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Not to be outdone on Selection Sunday, St. Patrick's Day, it was a good day for the boys in green at Baylor Ballpark. Baseball taking a bit of the attention away because they all they do this weekend is take on number 24, Texas Tech, at home. You're thinking, oh boy. You know, 4-14 four and 14 Baylor, they come in, they're... You know, they just got swept by Houston, which nobody's really expecting much out of the Big 12. Now they got to face mighty tech at home. This team that goes to Omaha every year. Tim Tadlock's terrific tech boys. Mm -mm. Baylor takes the series against number 24 tech. Now the Red Raiders are on a bit of a slide, but Baylor takes the series against like a perennial Omaha team. Boy, that feels good after already sweeping a team that went to Omaha last year. This is a good feeling for the Bears. They uh, it, they do it in an unconventional way. Uh, we've talked about their bats and what they've been like when they're hot this season. They score 17 in midweek. And then on Friday, they get shut out. But it's only 2 nothing. You're thinking, boy, that's, a, that's no moral victories. But that's a step in the right direction for a team that's trying to start winning some series. They're not going to do it this weekend, but this was a good sign. The next day, they go up big. It's 5 nothing. They have to wait it out till, till Sunday because of weather. They finish off that game, and then they beat Tech again, 7-2. to two. Like These guys weren't even close the last two games. It looked like Tech had one foot out the door. Tim Tadlock's teams don't do that. So how about those Bears, man? Moonshots over the scoreboard, good pitching. Kobe Andrade, a good a good outing uh, against Tech. This this team, I, I like the attitude they've played with. In that, no one expected them to do anything, or the expectations were bad. Right? They had a really long season last year. They brought in some new guys, some ones that you could get behind, get positive about. And within a week of the season starting, three of their starting nine go down for the season. One was already down, two go down in the first week. That's demoralizing, man. For a team that just went through what they went through last year, and they have not used it as a crutch. They haven't used it as an excuse. And are, are they going to go to to the to the tournament this year? Probably not. No, I doubt it. But, you know, you've seen the ups and downs already. They they sweep Oral Roberts, who was in the who was in the tournament last year, it was in Omaha last year, the final eight. Uh, then again, the sweep at Houston. And you're like, oh, okay, well, this is what this team is. No, then they come back and take a series against tech and had every opportunity to sweep tech. Like very close to that. They won one Big 12 series last year. They've already equaled that mark in 2024. Now, granted, that one in 23 was pretty early on in the season. Uh, I think it was the first series of the of this Big 12 series of the year, I think. But they've shown you they they've got some dudes in there. This this ain't a fluke. You know, they're again, it's not a fluke because they're not going to the tournament, but they can win some series in this conference. And especially when you add teams like BYU and Cincinnati, even UCF. Not 
bastions of baseball. Although Cincinnati has had Kevin Euclid and Sandy Koufax, but it, it allows some more opportunities in there on Baylor's schedule to not be so intimidated by what was in the last few years of the Big 12 as we know it, a very good baseball conference. So shout out to the to the baseball team, man. Let's keep this thing rolling. I'm I'm still a big Mitch Thompson believer. Uh I want to see how many they can take this year and and hopefully get back to that conference tournament, uh, which obviously now has a new layout with 14 teams. So get back there. That's the start. And then we'll start worrying about the tournament after that. Anyway, y'all, let me know what you thought about this baseball series win over Tech. Let me know what you think about the men's team as the three seed and how that region is looking for you or the women's team out as the five seed in Blacksburg. I, I thought they were going to be down at six or seven, but I, I'm happy to see that they went down uh, up to five. Let me know that down in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Thank you for making it. Your first listen today and every day. We'll have a ton of basketball talk this week on your favorite show, which is, of course, Locked On Baylor.